Make that big boss less special It ain't no game, but they say I'm Welcome to the second level Hello, Internet, and welcome back, or welcome to the official Level 2 podcast, yeah. episode 46. My name is William Shatner, <laughs> a.k.a. Keegan, hanging out with my buddy Tom, a.k.a. Bangers and Mash. How you doing today, Tom? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen. You are are you okay, Tom? <laughs> I'm doing just fine. Thank you, Mr. Shatner. Well, you are very welcome. I uh, met... Uh, William Shatner, the uh, Priceline guy, back in the day. Yeah, you called him the Priceline guy. Yeah, he didn't well, like didn't that. You? Yeah. He didn't like that at all. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are new or have not watched the Level 2 podcast before, basically, I pick a topic, we play the game in the middle or have some fun facts, and then Tom picks a topic, and we discuss both of those. Yay. Uh, hopefully my topic, my topic's been running long, so I'm hoping to make it short this week. I got a timer on the screen this time. I always forget to put the timer on the screen mm-hmm. for this, and I was like, oh, shit, it's 45 topic minutes is in. spontaneous. Yeah, so uh, if you watched Codename Morpheus yesterday, at the end of the podcast, I might have, uh, or listened to it, I guess, I might have stopped and said, hold up. Roy Halliday died. Do you know who Roy Halliday is, other than me I telling you who he was? Now, but before, no. I did not know who okay. Roy Halliday was. So, to, Roy... To, in my defense, I am ignorant to all things baseball, though. Yeah, so Roy Halliday is a two-time Cy Young winner. That means he's the best pitcher in baseball that year. Okay. Um, he was drafted by the Blue Jays in 1997. I'm going to fact check here real quick. Uh, 17th overall in 95. Okay. Made it to the majors in 98. Um, so, I want to talk about this because I have a Phillies hat. You do. It is a common thing. It is a thing. Bring up during... Yes. And people think well, I'm from Philadelphia and I'm not. We are from Philadelphia yeah. because you have a Phillies hat. Yeah. So, I'm a Phillies fan. I grew up, though, in good old New Brunswick, Canada, mm-hmm. which is Canada, which is... <laughs> I was assuming it was. Yes, which is baseball. There's two baseball teams at the time when I lived there, <clears> um, <throat> one of them being... The Montreal Expos, which became the uh, Nationals, the Washington Nationals once they moved. Expos is a poor name, so glad they changed it. Expositions. I know. I'm just saying it's a shit name for a baseball yeah. team. The other one is the Toronto Blue Jays, which are still there. They're the only Canadian team left. Uh, so I grew up watching the Toronto Blue Jays because that's what you did. TSN, the equivalent to ESPN Canada. Uh, host of the Toronto Blue Jays. You don't watch baseball, but if you guys watch uh, ESPN at all, uh, Dan Schulman is the voice or was the voice of ESPN baseball for a little while there. I don't know if he still is, was the voice of the Blue Jays. So it was really weird when I grew up watching the Blue Jays and had his voice. And then I moved to the States and watched baseball on ESPN and it's Dan Schulman. And I was like, whoa, mind blown. Uh, Cause you know how you have those voices throughout your life that mm-hmm. you just know, like David Attenborough, I'm sure for you is one of them. Mm-hmm. Like he is, he is the voice of that. Yeah. They That's just started Schulman uh, is for me. Blue Planet too as well. By the yeah. Way, I saw that. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, but I want to talk about because the day we're recording, which is Tuesday, uh, I got a message that Roy Halladay had passed away in a plane crash in the Gulf of Mexico. Quite the way to go. And I had a different topic. As I, as I say every week, I feel like I had a different topic, but I'm going to pick this one. Um, I want to talk about because I watched Roy Halladay when I was growing up. Um, he is one of the pitchers. He's one of the reasons I am a Phillies fan. I watched the Blue Jays growing up. F- figured out very quickly they weren't very good. The Yankees were the team. Boston was the team. I hated both of them because I was a Blue Jays fan. Uh, but when he went to the Phillies, I jumped on that Philly bandwagon pretty quickly. Uh, so I want to go over some facts about Roy Halladay here. Sure. Um, I know you probably won't know half of this, but I, again, I watched him with the Blue Jays, watched him with the Phillies. Sad to see him go. He made let us one, win a World Series. Um, but I got some facts about Mr. Roy Halladay, otherwise known as Doc Holliday. Halliday. See, I feel like I've heard Doc Holliday before. Doc Holliday is a name of somebody else. Well, Doc Holliday is the yeah. character in Back to the but Future. Doc, but, but Doc I'm, Holliday is his nickname. But I feel like I've heard the nickname of a baseball player called Doc Holliday that's, before. That's him. So he was uh, six foot six, 225 pounds, according to this, and was born May 14th, 1977. That's not the facts, but that's that's about him. I mean, that is a fact. That is. Uh, so here are some facts about uh, Roy Halliday from Jock Bio Vital Stats. Nice. Uh, number one, when Roy Halliday, or when Roy... Oh, when Roy came within one out of a no-hitter in 1998 against the Tigers, he lost it to a home run by Bobby Higginson. The ball was caught in the Toronto bullpen by David Steeb, the only Blue Jay to ever have thrown a no-hitter. Mm. A little fun fact there. Interesting. Roy was the third Blue Jays pitcher to win a Cy Young followed, following Roger Clemens. Do you know that name? 
Rings a bell. He uh, steroids man, but he also was a really good pitcher back That's in the day. Probably why it rings a bell. And Pat Hentgen, don't mm, know who that is. Don't know who that is. Yeah. Roy was the only pitcher who received votes on every ballot for the 2003 Cy Young Award. Chicago White Sox Epstein Loiza. I have, that's a name or Esteban Loiza, sorry, that's a name I haven't heard in a while. Uh, got only he got the only other first place votes. Both were from Chicago writers, so he was unanimous when it came to Cy Young Award. Hmm. Roy has done well in away games. In 2005, he had the league's best road ERA of 2.09. Do you know what ERA stands for, Tom? No. English Rifle Association. Earn run average. Ah. So the amount of runs he gave up per game was on average two. Gotcha. So that's pretty good. Very few people have under three. Like three is kind of like especially away. You're doing well. Yeah. yeah. At home, it's different. Roy's 100th career win came his came in his first start after undergoing appendectomy in 2007. I remember this happening. I've had an appendectomy. And his 200th start overall. No Toronto pitcher has ever reached the century mark that quickly. So he's won half. He won half his games at that point. That's crazy. Do you know what an appendectomy is? Yeah, it's, your, it's when your appendix has to come out. Yeah. Because it's, it's going to explode. Horrible. Roy drove in his first major league run against the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2007. That's weird. He came in the league in 1990. I guess he played in the AL, so he had a, D, a DH the whole time, so he never really batted. In 2008, Roy became the first pitcher to beat the New York Yankees five times since Luis Teant in 1974. I remember that being a big deal, too. Again, it's funny because like I, I've i watched him on the Blue Jays, and he goes to the Phillies, and I'm like, it's just, it's just Roy Halladay has been in my life since the get-go. Uh, I still play when I play uh, NBA 2K or M- NBA, NBA. M- MLB 2K. <laughs> Seven. He can jam a yeah. ball too. That'd yeah. He's the same height. He's six as foot six. Yeah. Uh, I always used him. Like I loved him as a, he has a nasty curveball. Uh, lots of strikeouts. Speaking of strikeouts, Roy set career high with 14 strikeouts and 133 pitches in a 2009 game against the Angels, Los Angeles Angels. Roy won his first career, 10 career starts at Rogers Center, 2008, formerly the Sky Dome. Is the Los Angeles Angels basically just saying the Angels, Angels? No, it's Los, Los Angeles. Technically, it's the Angels. Technically, right? it's Los Angeles Angels. Vanaheim oh. is their official name. Okay. But they used to be Anaheim Angels. Weird. Roy's 1.9 walks per nine innings pitch was the best in the AL in, nine, in, in 2009. 1.3. 1.3, whatever. <laughs> Roy led the AL in shutouts in 2003, 2008, and 2009. 2003, he was with the Blue Jays. 2008, and 2009, he was with the Phillies. Roy's perfect game in 2010 was the second in Phillies history. The first was authored by. F- Hall of Famer Jim Bunning in 1964. There's only been, I think, like 20 or 30-ish, I don't know the exact number between there, perfect games ever. I think and baseball. his was the 20th. His was the 20th, yeah. but that was a couple years ago, and there's been a couple since, so it's like mid-20s. Gotcha. I don't know the exact number, but he, uh, that's crazy. That's a feat. Do you know what a perfect game is? Uh, basically not letting the other team get a point and getting all their players out. Nobody gets on base, so 27 batters up, 27 batters down. No walks, uh, no errors, no nothing. Everybody, perfect. That's why it's, there's no hitters, which means nobody gets a hit, and there's shutouts, which means nobody gets a run. But a perfect game is 27 for 27. Gotcha. Uh, to commemorate his perfect game, Roy presented 60 members of the Phillies organization with watches inscribed. We did it together. Thanks, Roy Halladay. And one of the things I really love about Mr. Halladay is he is definitely one of those people that care. He's a genuine human being. Every time you saw him, he never he. He's one of those players that dealt with the stardom because he had to, but he never... You can tell he didn't really want it, but he didn't shy away from it, if that makes sense. like mm. he, he knew that's part of the gig. Um, but he was definitely one of those players that just kind of was Dang. down to earth. He didn't yeah. let it go to his head. Uh, let's see what some other good ones here. Uh, Roy Halladay was the first pitcher since Bobby Jones of the New York Mets in 2000 to throw a shutout in his first career start. He signed a $60 million extension with the Phillies. Roy Halladay and Roger Clemens are the only two Blue Jays with 20 win seasons. That's crazy because you only start maybe 25 to 27 games. So I think he, I remember that year, I think he went 20 and three that year or something like that. Something crazy. I'm reading there and I'm remembering it is Doc Brown is the Back to the Future one. Doc Holliday no. was the uh, the Western guy, the, the gunslinger. Yeah, that's in there. So this will tell you the kind of person Halladay is. After being dealt to the Phillies, Roy took out an ad thanking the Blue Jays fans for the love and support. That is the kind, like that, if you had to sum him up in one statement from, obviously I don't know him personally, but from a fan's perspective, 
that's what he was. He was with the Blue Jays when the Blue Jays sucked. He was the bright spot, bright spot in the Blue Jays. It was a lot of fun to watch, but like he was definitely one of those guys that bought in the organization. Like I said, it wasn't about him. It was about the team, and he bit the bullet and did what he had to do. Uh, Roy's teammates nicknamed him Doc after the Old West Gunslinger. Roy is one of the most active players in baseball when it comes to working in the community. He runs Doc's Box for kids, inviting children's and fam- children and family for from Toronto's hospital for sick children to the Rogers Center, aka Skydome, their the Toronto Stadium. He also is involved in the Blue Jays' Field of Dreams and the J Cares Foundation. So he's still doing that, even though he's on Phillies. Well, he's dead now. Well, he, he's still doing yeah, that. he was doing because he's from Toronto, like not from Toronto, <clears> but he was drafted by Toronto. So Toronto was his, like, if you asked him, Toronto was still his home. He was a Philly by trade right. and he loved the fans in Philadelphia, but he definitely is. It's, it's one of those kind things. Of similar to the his, Puol situation. His heart is still, yeah, he definitely will. He will, he, it's weird because more people know him as the Phillies because he had more success. The team had more success. And obviously a lot of people don't care about Canadian baseball. Like they don't, the Blue Jays kind of are one of those teams you don't hear about unless they're doing really well. Right. Um, so he kind of went on the radar, but he, some of his best seasons were in Toronto. I mean, he was a good pitcher overall. He never really had a bad season, in my opinion. Um, Roy was an avid card collector as a boy. His most treasured cards were Roger Clemens, Nolan Ryan, Ryan and Dale Murphy. During the offseason, Roy has full use of the Blue Jays training facility where he runs between 69 minutes each morning. And Roy's best friend as a kid was his sister, Heather who was four years younger. She now owns her brother every year on a fancy baseball team <laughs> while he still played. He's been retired now for four years. So I just wanted to, to kind of bring that up. I'm, I know you're not a huge baseball fan, but like, I can appreciate it to me. He, like I said, he's been there since I'm watching on TSN. I remember sitting down with my dad watching blue Jays games. It was, it was whenever holiday pitched, I'd like watch the games. It was him, Vernon Wells, uh, Raul Mondesi, Carlos Delgado. Um, who else was on that team? Sean green, Veritek was not there. I'm trying to think who the catcher was. I can't remember. Um, but I, I loved watching him grow, like growing up. I always had him on my team when I played him on sports games. And even when I played, like like I said, I'm a Phillies fan. And I watched the Blue Jays because that's who I could watch growing up. And I would say I was a Blue Jays fan growing up. But I fell in love with the Phillies for two reasons. One, I went to the city and fell in love there. But I already was a fan of them beforehand. And the fact that he went there was kind of what urged me to do it or urged me to become a fan of them and made the right decision. They ended up winning the World Series. And even now, they're the worst, literally the worst team in baseball. They have the worst record this year. And I uh, still support them. And I, it's kind of, it's really sad that, that Doc is no longer with us. Like, I, again, obviously didn't know him personally. Weird way but, to go, too. Like, yeah, plane crash. It, he yeah. Was, So he just got his pilot's license a month ago. I ah. remember him putting an Instagram post of Jesus. being excited. He got his pilot's license and... Obviously, we don't know what caused it, but they said the single is a single under engine plane that he owned went down, and Ugh. don't know don't know what the cause is. Hopefully, we'll find out here. Sad but day. it's sad. the only other pay- baseball player I remember dying in a plane crash was Corey Lyle, which you probably don't know who he is, but he's a Yankee. He ended up hitting a building with a plane. Yes. Yeah, he was. I think it was. I think it was in New York. I can't remember if it was New York City where he did, but I remember he hit a hit a building. I remember going, "That's weird." And this is pre nine eleven, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, planes hitting buildings became more not standard. But I mean, it's weird. For you, I always thought it must be weird to be a Philly fan in in St. Louis because I mean, St. Louis is baseball nuts. It's yes, like, it's it's baseball crazy. The good news is I have I've read, so I can cover my fandom until they see the P. Right, but it's. Uh... Because, I mean, when I came over here, like, I didn't know much about baseball. I, th- I always thought it looked interesting. But, Have you ever been to um, a game? Yeah, that's a cool. couple. We're, um, we're going to go to a Phillies Cardinals game. That's the only ones I go to because, sure. you know, unless I'm invited to one. I'm on board. <laughs> um, but I, I've seen, cheap. like, one hockey game and maybe four or five baseball games. Never seen a, a football game. Well, you won't um, now because they're gone. True. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was, it's always been, like, a crazy baseball town. And baseball is just a weird sport in general. But I do – one thing I always appreciate about baseball is, like – the people that really are into it, like they are really into it. Like the statistical side of it is just this kind of whole other kettle of fish. So people like really, mm-hmm. really 
obsess about stats and years and you know and and games and stuff like that like i can still remember game six of the uh the is it the 2011 mm-hmm. um cardinals thing where david freeze hit the an yeah. lds i believe and i was watching that yeah. live and i remember like even now like i'm like oh yeah game six or whatever because i was a part of that one mm-hmm. but like so well, that, but that's how i was with the with the blue jays back in the day like the blue jays so the blue jays are the same division and i'm sure you're gonna know these names as the yankees the Red Sox and then the Devil Rays mm. or the Tampa Bay Rays now, but they're the Devil Rays back then. And the way base the baseball system worked is you had a division winner, so the division winner went to the playoffs, and then you had what's called the wild card. So everybody it didn't matter what your record was as long as you won the division. So you could have a division winner that is maybe has a five hundred record, but then you could have a wild card person who has a better record than them, but this is a different division. The way the wild card works is it's the best record of non-division winners get in. So they mm. pick two of them. So I remember every year, because the Yankees, this was back when the Yankees were dominating, Yankees would go in and they would win the division to be Yankees. And then you always had to, it'd always be Yankees, Red Sox, Blue Jays. And there was one year the Blue Jays outlasted the Red Sox. And I was like, fuck yeah, they made the playoffs. Super stoked. Remember watching that series and uh, didn't go so well. Let's just say that. <laughs> but I, I remember watching that series live and being so excited that they were in it same thing with the raptors i used to follow the toronto raptors because again that's who you watched basketball uh, right. yeah that's basketball yeah, yeah. uh vince i was I there some i was there during the vince sanity during the vince carter era yeah, uh that. alvin williams i'm old school basketball jyd junk do you remember the, school, you remember the junkyard basketball. dog I, I just can't talk about baseball. Yeah, so. I remember Vince. Yeah, I remember Vince Carter. Yeah, Vin, it was Vince Carter, uh, the junkyard dog, Jerome Williams, Antonio they Davis. Used to argue between who's the best Vince Carter or Allen Iverson for a long time. Yep. They were like so titles. another another thing about that, that's why. I, it's funny because I hate the 76ers, which are from Philadelphia, but I'm a Phillies fan, because uh, Allen Iverson had an amazing Game 7 against the Raptors and knocked us out of playoffs multiple years in a row. But there's one game in particular that he just broke Toronto's heart, or mainly most of Canada's heart, because it's the only team that was in the playoffs at the time. And it's just like, mm, <laughs> I hate that man. I like, I respect Allen Iverson. He's a great player. Obviously, from a competitive standpoint, I didn't like him because he kept knocking my team out. But no, it's 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 really it's like that's what I did growing up. Like I played a lot of sports growing up. You would you you know how you like you emulate emulate people. Um, when I played baseball, I was a catcher, so I'd, I'd emulate uh, – I can't remember what the fucking catcher's name in, on the Blue Jays was, but I'd emulate him. Um, I would also then – when I when we played with friends, because my friends all played baseball with me, when I pitched, I wanted to be Roy Halladay. Like, that's who – it was Roy Halladay, Roger Clemens were my guys, and then Raul Mondesi, who you probably have no idea who that is. He's an obscure guy. Um, was the guys I used to watch growing up and wanted to be them. I used to want to be Glenn Rice. Yeah. Uh, Sinking them threes. Yeah. yeah. When you he was remember, on the Hornets. I was going to say, you remember Larry Johnson? Mm-hmm. LJ? Mm-hmm. Muggsy uh, Bogues. Yep. Muggsy Bogues I liked because Space Jam? he proved to me that you could be short and play basketball. And I know Nate Robinson stupid, now. But for a lot of the a lot of the time when I was younger playing basketball, like it was just like what the, people would laugh. Because you're short. Yeah, because yeah. I'm short. But I'm like, well, Muggsy Bogues, that motherfucker can dunk. You can do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's 5'4". Um, but yeah, no, I do remember all that Alonzo morning, all that stuff. Yeah. But, um, it's yeah, just, it's, it's just real day. weird. It's, it's not, it's day. not like, it's one of those things where like, I don't really know how to feel. He's been retired for four years. He's mm. been out of the league, but it just kind of sucks. He's 40 years old. Mm. And He's I just, young, it's just one of those things where way. selfishly he was, like I said, he was part of my childhood. He was part of the reasons I'm a Phillies fan. And again, I'm at this point, like I'm a diehard Phillies fan and I will even know we're worst in the league and people make fun of me all the time for it. Cause our team got old quick. Uh, you guys need to fix that. Uh, I can thank Roy Halladay for being the one that kind of made me be like, okay, I'm going to support this team because of what they're doing. But everywhere we go, someone always shouts out, yeah, go Phillies. Dude, yeah. when we were, when we were in, uh, yeah, when we were in Indie Popcon, I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Doesn't yeah, matter. Phil- Phillies are, are a good team. You got to support your teams, Tom. Mm. You got to support your teams. I Being in St. Louis, I love the Cardinals, and I, I always joke that here I will root for the Cardinals unless they're going against the Phillies or they're competing against the Phillies for a playoff spot. Mm. Then it's like, no. But I feel like i got to do it, otherwise I might get in trouble here if I'd be like... Yeah, no. they're a bit, bit rabid, the fans in this, so, in this city. Yeah, Roy Halladay, I just wanted... I mean, it, it was some sad news that came out during the podcast uh, yesterday, and I just wanted to bring it up and kind of say, kind of sucks, but I wanted to celebrate. The, he was a really good baseball player, really good human being. Um, go look up some of his highlights if you can. He had a perfect game, like I said, in 2000, I think it was 2008, 2007. 
um, that was incredible to watch. Uh, amazing pitcher. His curveball. He had the. He would. You know how like. Have you ever watched a baseball game on TV? Mm -hmm. You know how they have the pitch trajectory? Mm -hmm. So they do the pitch trajectory for his curveball, and it would start like eye level for the batter, and then by the time it's done, it's down to the dirt. He had a nasty curveball. Him and David Wells were the ones. David Wells was the lefty. Halliday was the righty. I don't know why the Blue Jays sucked. They had such good players. They just couldn't <laughs> put they just couldn't put it together, or injuries would happen. Yeah. Like there was one year they were doing really well, and then Canada injury just bug. Sticks to hockey generally. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Roy Halladay. There's no real rhyme or reason to it other than, like no, I said, that's, he, that's he, why we're he, here, man. He passed I mean, away. It's our podcast to do talk about whatever we want. I'm a and that's a good reason as any to big, big to Phillies fan. In his life, yeah, he's yeah. like I said, go go look at go check out his stuff. I'll um, have some I'll have some highlights going. He's I'll real. He's real cool. Yeah. So well, R.I.P. Roy Halladay, Doc 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 Holliday. Doc Holliday. Yeah. It's by the way, if you're looking it up, it's H A L L A D Y D A Y. It's not Holiday, it's Halliday. Mm. And that's how I tell people. But the nickname is Holiday. Yes. His name, his nickname is Doc Holiday. Mm. And that's how most people say it, but it's Roy Halliday, technically. So, I mean, from some sad news on to some slightly happier news, uh, and that is that we're going to play a game. And Does it drink Red Bull and make you have to chroma key this out so this can looks invisible? Because ah, it. it always happens. Um, but yeah, so uh, one of my favorite games that we play is called Sign Bites. We did it once. It didn't work out so great for me, but uh, <laughs> Got it, within, what, it the first was one? fun nonetheless. It's a really difficult one to pull off because uh, Keegan played very limited games growing up. And, uh, and they had very distinct sounds. And they had very distinct sounds. So, like, I almost have to try and pick, like, the less distinct sounds of games that I'm pretty sure these played, but I'm not, like, positive that he's played. So, like, I kind of just want to, like, like say, it, just send me a list of every game you've ever if played. If it's a Nintendo 64 or on game, no. Nintendo 64 or on minus GameCube. Okay. <laughs> I know it. Or if it's an Xbox... No, I just spit all over you. That's all right. <laughs> Xbox it. or Xbox 360 game. I know it. Well, I was looking at games Probably. like, and honestly, I was looking at like Halo 2 and stuff, and I'm just like, you know, maybe if I do a sequel, it'll, it'll get him. But then like, it's just gun signs, and I'm just yeah. like, no, I'm not just going to do grenade the, and gun the need, signs. The needler noise. I need, yeah, I need I need some more interesting. Well, and that, the sounds don't change from game to game, I don't think. So it'd be hard to get like specifically a, Halo a 2. A little bit, yeah. But I mean, yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to play Sound Bites, and uh, I have picked a game. I do believe that you have played it, or at least have know enough about it to recognize. Is it Fusion sounds. Frenzy? It's not. Ah. Um, I have, and this is how this game works for those of you that are listening or watching at home. So, um, how this game works is that I play five sound effects from a video game that I have not told Keegan what it is, and um, he. Psst, what is it? I can't tell you. Damn it. <laughs> and he can't. He, he doesn't say anything for the for the five sound effects because if he just like said what it was in the first sound effect, then it wouldn't be very. So fun you guys can you. play at home. So you can play at home. So what we do is we do the five sound effects. You'll tell. When, you can tell when I get it based on my reaction, though. Yeah, and he'll he'll tell you. But uh, after the five sound effects, I gave him the opportunity to give me the answer. Uh, and if he doesn't know, then I'll play the sixth sound effect, which is the theme song to the game. Uh, or if he gets it right, I will also play the, uh, the theme song to the game as a way to clarify his correctness. So, uh, yeah, so it's either like last chance or a confirmation that mm -hmm. you got it right to begin with. So, uh, you ready? Ready for this, this uh, week's one? You can't look at anything I'm doing because... Because there's like images on here for things. Um, I also have to. Is it Donkey Kong Country? It's not Donkey Kong Country. Um, <laughs> Make sure your volume's up so they can hear it. Oh yeah, I will. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, overdub. overdub anyway, so it'll be fine. But I just wanted to uh, to get this all kind of ready to go. Because the, the worst, the, the hardest part about it is like they move so fast. So I have to try and like stop them because yeah. they're only like a second or so each. So, um, are you ready? You feeling good? You feeling confident? I mean, we'll find out how confident I am based on the first sound. Okay, so you ready? This is sound number one. And I've got to see if I can pause it, like, instantly after. It's, it's definitely a platformer. Okay, you think you're confident already? You think it's Fairly a Fairly confident it's a platformer. Okay. I know that noise. I don't can't think of the game now. Do you want to hear the noise once more, or do you want to wait? No, go to the next one. Next one? Okay. Next sound? Sounds like a fighting game or an explosion of some sort. So you sort. think it's a platforming fighting game? Maybe. Or one or the other. I'm trying to think what it, what it would be with. They it sounds like I'm 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 getting platformer vibes, 
from that first sound because it was it was very child like childish sound like the rare but it's not rare that I can that I'm aware of in my brain right now. Okay. Um, and then that definitely sounded like a smack or a bro- a breaking of something. Okay. Third one. You ready? Yes. <laughs> That's a death sound. I have no idea what this game is yet, though. Okay. That's definitely a death. See, I'm keeping it low-key right now. now. There's some people at home that would have got this yeah, already. Yeah, it's definitely a death um, sound. But I'm like, so here's the thing. The next two are easier. I tried to make it so that... I didn't get the first one? Well, I didn't... Yeah, I didn't... I wanted you to, like, suffer a little bit. And so, I thought there's at least one or two that should be blindingly obvious. You know what that first sound was? That first sound was collecting something. That's what the first sound was. You think so? It was collecting something. It wasn't, but... I, oh. I'm, it, sounds, it sounds like you're collecting something. Are you ready? Yes. Fourth sound. Tiger! What do you say, tiger? I can't tell you. I can just tell you the sound. I mean, it's definitely an older game based on the audio quality of it. Yeah. So I want to I mean, say it's, ch- it's a chip. I want to. I want to go. For, yeah, I was gonna say I, I was going N64, but it might be NES or SNES. I want to say SNES based on the sound. Maybe Genesis, but I've not played too many Genesis games. I'm. I'm gonna say it's that. It's a 16-bit era. I'll tell you this. Where we're at. I'll tell you this before I tell you the last. Even though the, there's no way I should be helping you with this because the next one should give it away, but this has been released on multiple. Platforms, uh, platforms, and arcade. Cool. I okay. mean, it sounds like an arcade game. Yeah. With the, with the, the, with the these, smack sound, sounds like an arcade. These game. are the arcade sound effects, just so you know cool. where they're coming from. Okay. Last. One. Last one. This one should make should make it easy. Being by the key. No, I don't know what that is. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. I was hoping you wouldn't. That's why I was like, I don't know if he'll get this. So, do you want me to go through them again? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, so it's a collection collection sound. Ready? Yeah. (laughs) Tiger! (laughs) Sounds like it says tiger. Tiger! It's definitely not saying tiger, though, but that's what I hear. Okay. He is saying tiger. Is he? Hmm? Does that help you? No. It sounds like a fight. Like it really sounds like a fighting game. I want to. Okay. I want to say like Mortal Kombat. Okay. But it was Mortal, Mortal Kombat was an arcade game, was it? It was. It was an arcade game. I played it in the arcade. Well. Um, it definitely. It definitely. The more I hear it, it sounds like a fighter. The only thing that's throwing me off is that first sound. Unless that's like a sele- that could be a selection sound is what it could be. If that's a selection sound, I'm gonna say it's. I'm gonna say it's a fighting game, and I want to go with Mortal Kombat, but I don't think that's right. You ready for number six? Yeah. This is the one where you get to find out. Do you know what the theme song from Mortal Kombat is? No. Okay. I mean, I might without realizing I do. It's okay, because it's not that. No. Oh. Sounds like a generic fighter game. This might help. I have no idea. I have no idea what this is. Nothing at all? No. It sounds almost like a Sonic tune, but it's not. Okay, Sonic so. was never an arcade. Uh, no, I don't think it was. No. Uh, you want to hear it one more time, the theme song? Or are you? Are no, you I just don't know. Me? I just don't know. This game is... Is it a fighting game? Did I get that? Okay, I got that yes, part. Yes, it is a fighting game. You were really close. There's two big fighting games. Uh, Tekken? No. Uh, Soul it's, Calibur? It's not a 3 Hold on. I'm going to try and figure this one out. It's a 2D fighting game that had an arcade and came out roughly the same time. Maybe a little bit earlier than Mortal Kombat. I'm trying to think what it because Mortal Kombat's the only one I really know because I don't I don't know that many fighting games because I don't I've never really it played has them since uh, had multiple sequels and is still released to this day. Street Fighter. Yep. Cool. Street Fighter Two to be specific. Yeah, I wouldn't have gotten the name. Uh, the big one there. I've actually played the original Street Fighter and uh, is weird. What's yeah. the, so was that a selection noise? The first one. It was. Okay. It was the screen Z. It's what you do when you select at the beginning. Yeah, because yeah. at first I was like, that sounds like collection noise, but then I was like, wait, once I once I narrowed it down that it's a fighting game. I was like, okay, so we got, we got, probably the selection noise. But you see I, the, you see the, I try to throw you off, try yeah. to throw your game off. Yeah, the first one is the select uh, menu selection noise. The second one was a punch. Obviously. Yeah, you get smacked. Uh, the third one is, yep, someone getting knocked out. Uh, the fourth one, the tiger, is uh, the noise that Sagat, who is a character in the game, makes when he does his moves. He yeah. goes tiger, tiger, uppercut, and uh, does some stuff like that. I don't think I've ever played a Street Fighter game. And uh, I'm sure you've at least seen this in the arcade. And, I mean, I've seen uh, it. I didn't, I didn't the mean. last one was um, Chun Li saying "spinning bird kick." 
Yeah, I don't know. Which is a move in the game. Yeah. I was like, if I do Hadouken, <laughs> he's going to know it right off the bat. Even if I did like Hadouken. <laughs> so I was like, I was going for the lesser known sounds. Uh, and that's the one that I came out with. So yeah, Street Fighter 2, arcade edition. I was excited I got it narrowed down to a fighting game. You did really you did really well. For someone that hasn't actually played it that much, I wasn't sure if you played it or not. I was like, it's a classic. I'm sure he's played it at some point. In well, you have to game. remember when it's a classic to you. When, and I was very young at that yeah. time too. So I probably wasn't allowed to play. No, oh, that's okay. Uh, I mean, the only reason I know Mortal Kombat is because of the controversy that was around it. Mm-hmm. I've never played Street Fighter and I've never played Tekken. I know what they are and I'm aware of them. I just never played them. All right. If you if you would give me a hint that it had released uh, one this year, I probably would have gotten it. Gotcha. Because it was, I mean, Mortal Kombat was last year, Tekken and Street Fighter were this year. Mm. So I was gonna I was gonna be like, did he do Streets of Rage? Because we played that game. I debated it. Yeah. I debated it. I knew. I, I knew don't think that you would remember. I would. Yeah. For that. I figured you'd have better luck with Street Fighter, but yeah, because I was wrong. So, um, did you get it? Did you get it at home, listeners and watchers? Did you do it like I did and just narrowed it down, as you know, instantly? Let's put, uh, let's see what sound did you get it on uh, in the comments below, like sound number one, sound number two, etc. Or the theme. Um, or did you did you knock it right out with the menu selection? Uh, let, let us know. Cool. Uh, so that's sound bites. And, uh, that was a nice quick one. Uh, so let's move on to the last part of the day. Um, which is I have no idea what your topic is. I my tales. Uh, so it's a fun one. Um, it's it's not anything too crazy, but basically, um, here's kind of what I've what I decided to do this week. Because last week I was super pumped because it was Halloween. And I'm glad you didn't put it in here. You sent because if I'd opened up the note and saw it, saw it. Well, I, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't put. I didn't the, even think about that. Yeah. So I uh, so last week was Halloween, but it was overshadowed for us because it was Paris Games Week. Yeah. So we didn't get to do like spoopy stuff like I was kind of hoping we could do. Talk about scary games, things like that. I know you're not big on scary games, but you at least know about scary games. I am aware of scary games. One of the impressed. questions I was going to ask you was actually, what is the scariest game you ever played? Do you um, want to know the answer to that? I would love to know. The, the answer. answer is until dawn. Yeah, that is probably the scariest game I've ever played, because you made me play it. The scariest. <laughs> there's, I've said this before. I think I've said this before on the show. Like the scariest game before that that I've ever played because I don't do scary. Like Luigi's Mansion is probably like, oh, and yeah. I know it's not. I know. I know, I know it's that. not yeah. scary, but that's like that's that is scariest the scariest, scariest game I've ever played because I I don't play them. Don't you feel like better for having at least tried? Until no, Dawn, Until though? Dawn is a great game. Yeah. Don't like the scary part of it. Like if Until Dawn. Like, that's why I kind of really am excited for Hidden Agenda. I don't know enough about it. That looks like it's probably but scary, it, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I would love to do, like, a detective, like, ABC Agatha Christie. there Christy. another one? There's another one, isn't there, that they're doing? It's it's like Hidden Agenda. Oh, uh, Erica. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's probably scary as well, to be probably. honest. Probably. They probably all are. So, anyway, <clears throat> back into uh, my section for, for this week. And that is that I'm going to run down the top five scariest games in my life throughout my time of playing video games so this is not me saying i think this is a universal top five list of the scariest games this is your personal this is my personal top five scariest because each game left some kind of an intelligible i mark feel like i should me. give my top five until dawn luigi's mansion uh <laughs> donkey kong mario i'm trying to think what i what NASCAR. i would get scared of back in the day like i just didn't play them yeah yeah i really just didn't play like Lion King, maybe, but even then, that wasn't scary. Like that's that's <laughs> until Dawn and and uh, Luigi's Mansion are but the only truly scary that are ones. New to the channel, we've had conversations about scary things before, and uh, there's I don't do them. A very particular conversation we had about <laughs> scary movies where uh, Brave. Brave was uh, Keegan's scariest movie because the mom turns into a bear or something. No, so the scene is the mom, <laughs> so there, if you've seen the movie Brave, she turns into a bear and there's a scene where the camera's up above and uh, Merida, I think's her name, is on top of some wood planks and the mom jumps up and out and like tries to eat her. And I don't know if it's jump scare or if it's like and I think it's partially my fear of snakes is the mouth side of things is what mm. scares me like i don't like the i don't think anybody likes the feeling of being eaten but like it terrifies me when i like see teeth stuff. coming towards yeah like face. like whenever i do anything with with like i watch a lot of nature documentaries whenever i see like a lion lunge or something like i i pull the thing up <laughs> above my eyes like i can't do it that's okay there's just something about Dude, i would never i would never pick on you i'm just i'm just <laughs> saying you know it's uh it was it was interesting that that was kind of your experience yeah i remember your exact words was brave <laughs> brave the ginger scottish girl yep that was your exact words, because it is now etched into my brain. <laughs> I mean, that was my initial reaction. <laughs> it was. 
So, uh, so my my five personal uh, scariest game experiences, and obviously I'm going to run from five back to one. Um, but here they are, and I'll give you a reason for each one too. And the first one's a little obscure, so hopefully some people will get the reference to it. But uh, number five for me, uh, and this was one that honestly was tough to pick because there was quite a few that were floating around number four and Have five. Have you played for me. Slender Man? I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was Alien Isolation. And that's very unique to me because Alien Isolation is... Uh, aliens in general is like my childhood, as you know. Like, I'm a big Aliens fan, a uh, huge Aliens fan. And I love everything about that franchise. I will watch every movie. I will, And I still like every movie, despite some of them being shittier than others. Um, and I just... I love the idea of the Xenomorph and kind of this, this, this alien... Uh, being uh, and it was always terrifying to me as a kid so Alien Isolation for those of you that don't know is basically like this sort of untold story of uh, Ripley the, the star of the Alien series her Believe daughter it or not. Uh, her daughter goes to this uh, I think it's called the Sevastopol <clears throat> station to try and find out what happened to this little black box that had a flight recording from Ripley's uh, ship and when she gets there she discovers that all of the um, they call them working Joes but they're just like androids I guess they're like android janitors um, they're a little creepy but eventually they go evil for no reason and of course there is an alien on the station now the way that game plays though is that the alien is has AI like really good AI mm-hmm. like we talked about how in um, Echo on, on Indie Please Add Details, how Echo, like, it learns from what you do. Well, that's the same case for this alien. So, like, if you uh, continuously use the same methods of escape in terms of, like, sound noises or whatever, like, it's eventually just going to stop doing it. Like, if you throw a sound thing, it'll just be like, nope, that's a fake, and then it yeah. will just come after you anyway. So, the majority of your game is spent, like, hiding uh, under cupboards and just tables and just being generally terrified. I'm remember the first time I learned that the alien could go inside the the vent ducts with you and uh, I didn't know that so I went in the vent duct to escape and then as I'm walking through this fucking alien charges me and much like your fear of like open mouths in my face in a close quarters I was like holy shit and even later in the game spoilers for those of you that haven't played it they do introduce other forms of uh, alien life form in the xenomorph life cycle including face huggers which are universally my most feared thing one ever right over there there is one over you there you guys can't and see it yeah it's, right it's, over there. it's pretty terrifying uh, i mean basically it's a spider with a tail that's the size of your face I mean, see it's... spiders don't do anything for me i mean i, I don't like yeah, them that's but my I, fear. I just smash them yeah I just... i'm bigger than them i mean i'm bigger than the snake but snakes can eat me no, they can't. They can, but they can constrict <clears throat> you. An anaconda might be able to eat you, but a regular yeah, yeah. grass snake wouldn't well. be able to. They bite, though. I, I, I'm i with you. Like On snakes, like I'll pick one up because uh, they're in my garden all the time. I'll pick one up, but I'll pick Yeah, when I had dogs out for you and you're like, oh, by the way, there might be snakes back here. I was like, fuck <laughs> that. I wore, I wear gloves every time I pick them up because I'm terrified of them like swinging around and biting well, me. Well, it's a garden snake. It won't be too bad. It'll just puncture you. Yeah, it's I know, not poisonous, obviously, where we still, live. Like, if you go to Australia, though, creepy, whoo, though isn't it? You know. Cat, I'm never going to visit you in Australia because you have things that will kill me in my sleep. So, you know, you're just hanging by the tail or whatever. Anyway, uh, Alien Isolation is uh, such an immersive uh, experience. It is like my number one most wished for game in VR. Um, because I think that would take it to the next level. But I just, I really, really loved my time with the game. I thought the AI was uni- unique and brilliant. I thought the working Joes being evil were, were awesome. And just the whole, everything about that game is super creepy, super everything that I love about a scary game. So uh, Alien Isolation takes uh, that spot for me. Uh, so uh, next up, number four, this is a game that I'm, frankly a little bit ashamed to say that I could not complete I was so scared of this game uh, and that is Dead Space the original Dead Space uh, those of you that are familiar with the Dead Space series essentially it's like Resident Evil in space with a little bit more harsh um, R.I.P. Visceral it's an yeah it's a yeah poor old Visceral uh, got the boot from EA but it's um, it's a it's a survival horror game in space where you get a menagerie of very interesting weapons to take down. Uh, I believe they're called necromorphs is the name of the, the bad things. But the necromorphs take some really interesting kind of sizes and shapes. Like there's babies, like literal demon babies that are chasing you and stuff. But you like you could get some weapons that were so precision made that you could like take off individual limbs of the creatures, or you could like shoot a spear that would pin them to the wall. Like it wasn't like you were um, you know heavily 
uh, it wasn't like a Silent Hill where like melee is pretty much all you have. There's no guns. Like you were well armed in this game, but the way they did the jump scares and the bosses and the way you're sort of traveling from station to station scared the shit out of me. And it wasn't like it wasn't like I couldn't finish it. Like I think if I really wanted to, I probably could have forced it through. But I found myself getting to the point where every time I sat down to play it, I would just get like real nervous. And I like I was like I'm not enjoying this. Like mm-hmm. I'm actually like. I am afraid of playing this game because it, it you know, puts the willies up me. <laughs> I just didn't want to. I you didn't don't want, want the to willies inside of you. I do not want the willies inside of me. So I, so I stopped playing, and it, and then I, I, I kind of put it down to like I stopped playing because I lost interest. But at the same time, I think part of that was because it was so fucking scary, and um, and I, I don't say that lightly as someone that's played horror games since the dawn of time um that game scared the shit out of me so dead space if you want to play dead space you can actually play it on uh goodoldgames.com right now they've remastered it and you can get it there or i think it's on steam now too it's great it's a solid game i absolutely recommend it just quite scary uh number three and this was a hard one because uh basically there's so many games in this franchise that could stand out and be you know actual winners here and this is going to be this is where the personal part comes in over like the actual like probably the most recognizable silent hill uh four the room yes i know four uh most people hated this game because it was a a massive departure from the original silent hill games which mostly had you running around like a foggy town and you know yeah you would run into scary things like pyramid head and whatever else was out in the in the fog um but those games as creepy and weird as they were didn't hit me quite the same way as silent hill 4 did uh the kind of the the niche difference with silent hill 4 was that there was a hub world that you were in and the hub world was in first person it was an apartment it was just a, a normal apartment and then uh things would change and occur in your apartment that would lead you to be able to go into these sort of actual silent hill worlds where you would play the normal part of the game so like your let's say you went to your washer and dryer room you'd discover a portal to prison world or whatever and then you'd just follow that and then you were in the game but you always came back to the hub world now the hub world being this kind of creepy apartment that you're in This is where it got me. Um, There are things in the hub world that manifest throughout your playing of the game that you're not expecting. So it starts out with like nothing at all. Like you'll just notice some weird changes occasionally. Like there's a hole that you can look through to see your neighbor's uh, like apartment. And there's just a pink bunny staring at you uh, in the other room. And that's super creepy, you know. And then like you might come back later and it's like gone or it's like closer or whatever. Um, But here's, here's the weird part. The actual like game worlds themselves were pretty pretty freaky, but it was when you came back. So you'd come back, and then you your apartment might have what they would call a haunting. So something somewhere was like haunted in your apartment, and you had to dispel the haunting with a candle. So you'd have to go and light this kind of like big white candle next to whatever it was that was going on in your place. But you had to search the place to find out what it was. So like you would just be walking around, and you'd hear this kind of like weird noise and you'd go into the lounge and you'd have like a thousand little baby faces pushing out of your wool or something like that and you'd be like holy shit this is terrifying put the candle down run away hope that the haunting would go away so like you're being continuously pummeled even in your hub world by these like ghouls and ghosts and things like that and the way they did them were just so smart and so clever um i i played this with a friend uh the friend was doing the whole i don't want to play the game but give me the guide and i'll help you type thing Mm -hmm. and i was the one playing the game so i was really petrified for most of it but yeah those in between parts in silent hill for the room like in between the normal worlds where you were back in the apartment and you were sort of searching for a haunting that could be anything and anywhere were terrifying to me so uh that definitely made the list over silent hill uh one two and three uh for me or any subsequent ones Number two is one you are well aware of, uh, and this I've said many a time before, is uh, definitely the best experience I've ever had in VR, and the scariest experience I've ever had in VR, and immersion-wise, just one of the scariest experiences ever, that's why it's number two, and that is Resident Evil 7 uh, for VR, only in VR, I would say, because like, I mean, I'm sure the game is pretty scary, like flat, but in VR, just there's Adds more. so much more uh, fear added into it. So, yeah, as you know, the first time playing that game through, like, w- I couldn't believe how terrified I was because I am a huge horror guy. Don't get scared that easy. But when I was, like, walking down the hallways and actually, like, going at, like, 
minus two miles an hour <laughs> like because i was so nervous and like peeking around every door and just like hearing the noises you could hear around the house like oh man it got me so hard and that's such a weird phrase um and, but it, but it got me like to a level where i was petrified to move anywhere because like there was always something that i was expecting and then the worst part was the payoff would be that something would fucking be there you know like like mia would come swinging around the corner with a chainsaw or something and you'd be like okay i was right to be scared i was right like <laughs> my fight or flight is in point it's on point like you know so um and the fact that the ai in that game again works mysteriously like the alien in alien isolation like when you're walking around the house with uh i forget the dude's name but the dad of the family i think it was jack or something uh and he's stalking you like that's genuine that's genuine ai that's genuine like let the character walk around and you have to avoid him it's not like a he doesn't have a set path or anything he listens for noises so it just makes it that much more terrifying um so yeah resident evil 7 in vr specifically uh second on the list and one of the scariest experiences i've ever had in a video game sold 3.7 million copies and announced a new resident evil was already in motion yeah i can't wait for um i wonder if they'll do it in vr in december so what beats resident evil 7 you might be asking yourself well it's an obscure game some of you will know it and especially old school horror fans it won't be any surprise to you that it's japanese um, and that is a game called, uh, well, when it was released in England, it was simply called The Crimson Butterfly. Uh, in its true native tongue, it is called Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly. Uh, or so Project Zero 2. Project Zero, yeah, uh, was, the, was the English version of it. Sorry, not, not weird. Crimson Butterfly. Well, it's Project Zero 2 Crimson Butterfly. It's weird. Yeah, I know. It's weird naming things. I don't know what was wrong with Fatal Frame. I mean, that's a pretty good name. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, so Fatal Frame 2, uh, or Project Zero, as it was known uh, when I bought it, uh, is one of the creepiest fucking games ever. For, for, for one thing, if anyone does horror well, it's the Japanese. Like, they know how to really fuck with you uh, in in the horror world. Like, it's one of the most enjoyable things that, that I get from, from those movies and, and uh, those games. Um, but here's the point of that game, is that in Project Zero, Fatal Frame, you only have a camera. And there's no weapons. There's nothing. You are uh, on location in kind of this this house, this ancient like um, house. And there are ghosts in the house that are just scary. I mean, they're doing scary ghost things like hanging themselves or whatever. But so when they see you, they will come for you. And you, the only way to sort of uh, dispel them or to move them back is to take a well-framed picture of the ghost. So I didn't really understand the mechanics too well when I started the game out. So for me, I just felt like it was instant death anywhere that I went because I didn't know I had to take a picture of him, you know. But the idea is that the camera can, like, basically keep them away from you. Which and is where the term fatal hit... frame comes from. Yeah, and if you take enough of the right shot, then it'll just... It's because they call it Project Zero. You're like, I don't know what that means. That might explain it. Fatal frame might have made more sense. Uh, but you're basically taking photos of these ghosts to kind of dispel them from the area and then and sort of exercise the place, if you will, with this camera obscure. I think was the name of the camera that you had um, but yeah so the thing about it is is it, it's this you know it's 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 Japanese so it's a lot of like the creepiest fucking ghosts you can imagine like lots of long black haired women and like all that kind of traditional tropey Japanese stuff but just like they'll go from like zero to a hundred like real quick like they'll just be silently sobbing in a corner to like in your face and you're like oh my god you're trying to get your camera and the atmosphere even though this is like PS2 era game the atmosphere Atmosphere was incredible to the point where, once again, this is the only other time than Dead Space, I had to stop playing. I couldn't keep going because it was terrifying me that much. And I just like, I just was like, fucking no, I'm not touching that game ever again. Dead Space, it was a combination of laziness and forgetting where I was in the in the game. Uh, Fatal Frame, un unabashedly, it was because I was too terrified to pick it up again. Um, and at the time of play, I was like 14, 15. Like, I wasn't like a young young kid i was well versed in the world of horror and, and especially horror games um but there's something about the fatal frame games and specifically for me the, the second one um that just kind of just sends shivers up my spine and it's because i've always had like a weird aversion to ghosts over most of like the horror stuff i've seen a ghost I don't believe you, but that's okay. Um, it's, it's just, I just don't believe in ghosts. Yeah. But like, but that's why it gets me is because like 
monsters and shit like that. Like that scares you. Like mm-hmm. monsters and snakes and whatever else. Like anything that can like get in your face. And <laughs> creatures, right? Um, there's something about ghosts to me that e- even though I 100% don't, be- I, and I believe that you believe you saw a ghost, but uh, I don't believe in them. And I still watch ghost hunters i still watch those shows because it still scares me even though i don't believe in them and i kind of like i want them to be real in a way because once you see one you'll believe it trust me it's one of those things if you if you You witness if you see a form you'll yeah i mean what what i think to be a form well i mean you can tell me the story in a minute but um but like for me like ghosts have always been that one thing that I've never been quite sure about it. Like I've never been like, I, I've had experiences that felt like they were like that. Like um, I remember uh, there was one instance where we went to stay at this uh, university in Plymouth, which is like uh, right on the Southern sort of tip of, of England. And we went to go stay with some friends there. It's like a surf place. And there was, there was like lots of stories about like ghosts and stuff in that area because it was a place that got bombed a lot. It was uh, really close to the water and like, they'd have like ruins in the, in the town. So you'd have like a literal, a literal bombed church in the middle of like skyscrapers and stuff because mm-hmm. they tried to keep the heritage. So there was a lot of like ghost stories around the Plymouth area. And like, we had this one like experience where we went into this house and then the uh, record player started playing upstairs and then it got stuck on a loop and it was like it, but it was like the creepiest loop possible it was like a, never leave again never leave or something like that and i'm just like oh my god and i'm freaking out and then like we hear noises upstairs we go upstairs there's no one there that kind of stuff so i've had that kind of an experience which was terrifying i've never seen or like even come close to seeing like apparitions or anything like that because i just my brain is just like no like it's impossible science just says no and i'm a guy that believes in aliens so it's not like i'm completely no to all that stuff i'm just like ghosts just seem stupid to me uh in terms of like viability Uh, i like that some people feel like they saw the ghost of like their granddad or their grandma or like someone in their family because i believe that that gives them some form of closure and i feel like a dick just kind of dismissing that but at the same time like part my part of my brain doesn't want me or doesn't want to let me believe that that's a possibility like, so when you see, i i was the same way i didn't believe in them until i had this experience and i now am a firm believer that right. something exists that's so it. uh one night, I think I've told the story before, but in my house in Canada, uh, or second house in Canada, I was on the third floor by myself. So we had a three-story house. I had the third floor bedroom to myself. My sister was on the second floor. And when you went down the stairs to the left, that was her bedroom. And then my parents were to the right. Um, and my brother was right there. But I don't think, I don't know if he was born at the time or not. He might have been. Uh, actually, might have. he had to be, but he would have been a baby. So one night, we go into bed, whatever. Like, there's no no storm, not stereotypical stuff. Like, it's just a normal night. I go to bed at, like, 10.30, whatever it may be. I don't know the time, exact time because didn't pay attention to the clock. And then I wake up at, like, I'm going to guess probably midnight, 1 a.m. Um, to what sounds like footsteps. And I'm on the third floor by myself, and I'm scared. Like, what is happening? Like, is somebody up here with me? Like, did, did somebody get up? Whatever it may be. It's going to be pretty loud footsteps to wake you up, I imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I sleep pretty well. So... I go, I get up and I like, know, I, I and I, and I hear it and I hear it constantly. Like, it's one of those things where like, it just keeps going and it, and I hear it. And like, I don't know why I got up. Cause I'm just, a, I'm such a giant whip, but I got up and I go down the stairs at the, at the bottom of the stairs. My sister comes out of her bedroom and we kind of stop. And, and we're probably at this point, I was, I was elementary school and she was probably, she might've been middle school at the time, roughly. Um, and we stop and we both kind of look at, we didn't say anything and, except for this. We go, did you hear footsteps? And she's like, yeah. Did you hear it? Yeah. And we go to our, our, our mom and we wake mom and dad up and they're like, go to bed. You guys are stupid. Like there's nothing there. Go back to bed, whatever. Like, okay, maybe it was the wind, whatever. Cause we lived in an old house, creaky old house. Go back to bed. Maybe I'm going to guess again. I don't know really no time frame cause I didn't check the clocks, but probably an hour to two hours later, we get up exact same thing happens. I go downstairs, meet her at the bottom of the steps. Did, we heard footsteps and at this point my mom's like maybe there is somebody in her house like maybe somebody broke in whatever it may be um or an animal whatever it may be um so mom gets up gets out of bed she begrudgingly does this she goes checks the house doesn't find anything was your dad there at the time i don't know i do not know because mom is the one who got up dad wouldn't get up (laughs) Mom was the one. That I was took wondering care of if this. it was him with the footsteps potentially. No, he I, he was either in bed or he was traveling. I'm not sure which. 
Um, so mom searches house, doesn't find anything. Still on and so forth. We then uh, go back to bed. And a few hours later, I, I hear it again. Like, it's right next to my bed this time. So the first time I heard it, it was the way my bedroom was. When you go up to the third floor, there's foot. We, me and Kelsey are the first steps up the stairs. And then there's a landing with two other rooms besides my bedroom up there. And I heard them up there, which is when she came out the second time. Third time, it's right next to my bed. Like, you, it's one of those things where you go under the covers because you can hear it getting closer to you. And you're like, I don't like this. Like, you, and he's like, nope. <laughs> um, but I woke up the third time to footsteps. I didn't get up this time because they were in my bedroom. Um, I looked to my closet. A uh, little fun fact about my closet. There's a trap door because it used to be a, a slave house like to free, for freed slaves. There's a trap door that went from the third floor down to the basement to get out of the house. And uh, I saw what I believe to be a ghost, a figure of some sort of some man standing there just kind of looking at the closet. Don't know what he's doing. Like, I couldn't tell you what he just he was just there. Um, he had a big bushy beard and he had, uh, like thick frame glasses on does like, I remember seeing his face and being like, so there was detail to it. Yes. It wasn't just like a, like a wisp of smoke. I mean, so. it, it, it was a wisp, but it, you could see, like, I could see this part of him. I don't remember what he was wearing. Don't, don't remember any of that. Have been like half asleep or, I mean, I could have, yeah. but, but like, I firmly believe I saw something there. So then at that point I'm freaking out. I'm just hiding under the covers at this point. Like. And then I fall asleep at some point, wake back up, and the next morning I see uh, by my closet two boot prints that are there. Like, interesting. They're not mud. It's not mud, but it's it's either it was either dirt or it was where dirt was removed. Hmm. I'm not quite sure which like which one it was, but there's two boot prints that were up there. Like if you had a dusty floor and you yeah. put boots on it, you yeah, see that's what it looked made. like. Yeah. Um. So we, I at that point I'm freaking out. Mom comes upstairs. Kelsey comes upstairs. My sister and we look, and there's indeed footprints. Did you take a picture? No, we didn't have digital oh, camera at the time. Um, Did you ever look into the story? Did you just try and see if there was like? A, we never found anything. It we sounds like the highest we asked, in history. We asked about the historic. We asked the historical society if there's anything they knew about the house. They said other than it being a slave house, they've never. They don't. They didn't know any stories, but it could have been undocumented. That's yeah. the other thing too. So. That was probably the scariest moment. And then at that point, you're like, I don't want to be up here. And then whenever storms happened was like, because the house would creak. There's a difference between creak and hearing things walking towards you. Yeah. And it's, that's when I freaked out. And like I said, when I saw the the image, because my, my room is, lo- it's kind of like your basement. It's long and narrow. So my bed is on one end of the room. The closet's like a good, probably it's literally on the other side of the house. Cause that's the way my room is set up. And it was, yeah. It was it was terrifying. And then when we found the 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 footprints or the boot prints, interesting. Um, it was that's that's when I was like, okay, something happened here, but I don't know if I want to believe it. Like it's one of those things. Like you're saying, you don't want to believe it because you you're like, there's no way that's true. But I don't know how to explain what I saw. Yeah. So it's like, well, I I believe there's usually some kind of a thing because I've had like because we've had this where I'm like daydreaming mm-hmm. and like and I see things when I'm daydreaming or maybe I'm on the cusp of falling asleep and I might see something but I've never had like something that's like been vivid been like okay that definitely happened in you know and I'm, I'm like not half asleep or whatever. Yeah. Again, I could have been half because I woke up to it three times. But cool story. Though. It was just it was just kind of like ooh this is this is the thing. So- I do have a I do have a question about your list here though. Sure. Uh, one, have you played PT? Yes. Why did that not make the list? Uh, because PT was scary for sure, but it, it was like, you know, I said like the fourth and fifth and whatnot were mm-hmm. like, they were juggling for me. Was that PT? PT was in the juggle. Uh, it was in the juggle. It probably would be number six, but what, for one thing, it's a demo. It's not mm-hmm. a game. Um, That's what I was thinking, like, since it was in a full game. Two, it was impossible to finish unless you did the stupidest fucking shit in the world. So even though, yes, it was definitely a high fear factor playing PT, I don't... There, there was not a point playing PT where I was like, I can't do this anymore. And did you have you played Five Nights at Freddy's? I have. Not scary. Not scary. No. I know that jump scares. It comes at you and jump scares you. Yeah, it's just, uh, it just the, the way the game is set up, it's too cartoony for me yeah. to be scared of it. Because um, those are the two games that I know. Are there was a couple stu- older ones I was thinking, of considering there's a game called The Suffering, which was really good. Sounds on fun. Sounds like a thrill. Yeah. Um, it, but it was a creepy game. The Suffering had a lot of uh, set moments. Like, you know, you like you 
you would trigger something when you walked into a room or whatever obviously the evil within like they just released a sequel to that that's got some pretty creepy moments in it the original game i didn't make it all the way through mostly because i was bored as opposed to scared though um and of course like i played the first resident evil when it first came out so like for at that time that was definitely like holy shit this is terrifying and like the dogs breaking through the window and all that kind of stuff but at the same time like it was hard for me to nail the list down honestly because there's so many games that have affected me uh and you know how fucking addicted to horror games i am and Mm -hmm. horror movies and stuff so like it was a hard list to nail down but like the reason why those made the cut was because they affected me to the point where i still remembered them Mm -hmm. and even if i managed to make it to the end of the game like it still was like holy shit that was an experience and i never want to do it again yeah except for alien isolation in vr which i would totally do again um and i'm of course going to play the dlc for what if they make fatal frame vr fuck that (laughs) Yeah, fuck that. You have to put <laughs> your head. 12, fuck that 12 ways to Sunday. I'm not going any any fucking where near Fatal Frame VR. But yeah, that's my list. Um, and I'd love to hear what you guys think, A, of my list, and B, of your own personal like spooky games that uh, oops, uh, that are were just too much. Either you had to turn them off, or there was something about them that just you know got to you in a certain way, whether it be like with Keegan, like it was a certain creature in the game that you just couldn't deal with or whether it was the way the game was laid out the atmosphere whatever it might be uh have you played fatal frame 2 i'd love to to talk about it with you guys because it's, again it's a little bit of an obscure title but uh horror heads will know it well um so what do you think uh about that list and what do you think about your own experiences and also do you even ghosts have you had a ghost experience because that's a, that was that was an interesting story um yeah like i said i was i was very similar to like ghosts don't exist because yeah. i i'm i'm, I'm kind of like I believe in aliens. I think we're too naive to think we're the only for sure life. But aliens was... make sense to me scientifically. Ghosts don't, which is I think where the crossover is. It's like why would people be walking around mm-hmm. in spirit form after they're dead like that? Like because I don't because I'm an atheist yeah. as well. Like there's an extra Not layer like purgatory of, like, or whatever. Yeah, like I don't believe there's like any like other waiting to p- cross over because I don't think there's a crossover. So for me, it's like it would be stupid for me to be an atheist and believe in ghosts. Yeah, but I can very much be an atheist and believe in aliens. Because I because uh, I, I mean the way I look at it is they're protecting something or something happened, so they not that they're cr- not crossing over, but they they never there's souls quote unquote like stuck never yeah never well made i've it. seen i've seen all the ghosts like i know like the residual hauntings yeah. and all that kind i hate of ghosts stuff, but, but ghost hunters or whatever it's called is real cheesy it is but it's so ex- like but i love that like I, I because because i can watch that show knowing that i don't believe any of it because i break it down I like i still that's dumb. get excited by it like i still like oh did they get one this time like i'm still like yeah. i i don't know what it is like it's just a stupid thing it's like me with ancient think. aliens i watch the crap out of ancient aliens i don't believe half the shit they say right, but i'm like but some of your some of your right? points are somewhat valid Let's a uh, couple plumbers break out the the uh, ESD meter or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, What's it called? ESP ESP know. meter. Start talking to people. Get flashlights on the torch. Yeah. Love it. Uh, anyway, that was uh, episode forty six. 46 of uh, the level 2 podcast bit of a weird one this week bit of a mishmash hopefully you enjoyed it and the game and uh, the stories and things like that uh, this is pretty much how this podcast goes every week it's a lot more casual a lot R.I.P. More relaxed, Doc Holiday back. yeah R.I.P. Doc Holiday and um, on top of that of course you can catch us on Wednesdays with Indie Please Add Details which is our podcast based purely on indie games and indie developers and what they're up to trying to sift through the, uh, the coal to find a couple diamonds and then uh, of course Thursday is Codename Morpheus, which is our VR uh, podcast, Vidcast, which is uh, pretty popular right now. So we're happy about how that one's going. But yeah, we love you guys uh, hanging out with us all the time. Uh, we like to thank you again, as always, for your continued uh, support of the channel and uh, helping we just us passed get 1100 to according to my numbers today when yeah, I logged in. Yeah, just YouTube passed 1100 on the subs. It's always nice. But of course, the, the nicest so thing you can do is simply talk to us. Uh, just comment, say hi, share with your friends, uh, reach out. We're very human. We will interact with you. Uh, they, I promise you, like, if you ever wanted to have a level of interaction with people that you watch on a regular basis, we are definitely a good place to start because we're super into talking to people um, and talking in general, for that matter. Uh, so that being said, anything you want to add? No, not really. I feel like you asked me that every week. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that is the Level 2 Podcast. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, welcome to the second level. Bye-bye. No game, but they say welcome to the second level.